You have an Omniscan. I have an Omniscan. We have points quantity. What is that? If you use an Omniscan, you've heard of something called points quantity. Now this is a clever way to reduce the amount of data that we have in each A scan. It does make Omniscan files a nice convenient size, but we should know how to use it. You'll find points quantity in the UT settings advanced menu. You see points quantity is available for us to change. Everything else is grayed out. That's the way it is up to version 5.10 on this operating system. In the future, we might be able to change the other things independently, but for right now, the only thing we can monkey with is points quantity. Points quantity sort of resamples the A scan into X number of points. It's not a pure resampling. What it does is actually kind of clever. It takes the A scan, divides it into that many bins that you have defined in your points quantity, and then takes the highest amplitude it sees in each bin and then uses that for each value. By doing that, it retains amplitude fidelity. Retaining amplitude fidelity is really important for things like weld inspection, where the severity of the flaw is measured by the amplitude of the signal. In order to utilize all 16,384 points on your A scan, so that's maximum resolution, no compression on an X3, which has a digitization rate of 100 megahertz, that's once every 100 millionth of a second, or once every 10 nanoseconds, you would need 16,384 time slots times 10 nanoseconds, which is 164 microseconds worth of sound path, at 3,240 meters per second, which is shear waves and steel, that takes up about 500 millimeters or 20 inches of sound path, sort of outside of our typical range anyway. So the chances of you even being able to use 16384 are slim to none. For normal sound path ranges, sample at 100 megahertz, we just don't have 16,384 points. We have probably two or 3,000. That's normally gonna be the maximum number you can ever dial your points quantity up to. If for typical welds, our maximum available is only two or 3,000 data points, then how much lower can we go? ASME Section 5, Article 4, Mandatory Appendix 5 for Encoded Phased Array. Boy, that just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? It states that A-scan data shall be recorded at a minimum digitization rate of five times the examination frequency. That means with five megahertz transducers, they wanna see a net digitization rate of 25 megahertz. Let's run a test and compare the effect of using different points quantities. Here I've got two Vermone NDT 5 MHz 32 element transducers. I've got a gyra microbe and I've got this Flospec test plate here. It's 5 eighths of an inch thick. I've got everything nicely taped up too. I don't always do that, but when I do, I'm making a video. This is the most number of points we can use. Compressions one, net digitizing frequency is 100 MHz. That is 20 times the probe frequency. It's gonna make a big file but it's gonna be overkill. The code says at a minimum, that should be 25 megahertz. So let's run another test. We'll reduce the points quantity down to get the net digitizing frequency down to 25 megahertz, which is the minimum for code. And then we'll do another one just for fun, really low. It won't be code compliant, but we'll take a look and see what it does to the look of our file and the file size. The maximum res one is almost 300 megabytes. That would have capped out an MX2. In this case, we have no problem storing that on an X3. And the one that is code compliant or 850 points, that is 90 megs. And then when we go down to the one that's way too low, under code, but we did it anyways, that one is 40 megabytes. The max res file, you can see, of course, it looks really good. I've got a lot of resolution on my A scan. And in fact, let's uh, just zoom into one of these sections right here. We'll zoom into that A scan like this, and you can see it looks really nice. Now to the code compliant one, you can see we'll get approximately the same point. We'll zoom into a similar A scan. You can see we don't have that lobe to lobe resolution. You don't really need it so much. This one meets code, it still looks good. Now let's take a look at the low resolution one. When we zoom into the A scan here, you can see it does look significantly more chunky. This is what they're trying to protect you against. They want you to be able to see those little ups and downs. The amplitudes are still all good. We just don't have that resolution along the A scan and we need that to do things like tip diffraction sizing for the height of flaws. Looking at these side by side, apart from losing a little bit of coupling on my SKU 270 probe, it really doesn't make any difference to the appearance of the S scan or the C scan. It's not really till you zoom into the A scan that you start to see the difference. 
So points quantity allows us to control the resolution of the A-scan without losing amplitude fidelity. We can dial it down a little bit for maximum as long as we keep that net digitization frequency at least five times the probe frequency. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and thanks for watching.